This is Billionaire Mondays. Every Monday, we present you with another billionaire. Today, we're looking at 15 Things You Didn't Know About J. Paul Getty. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome back to our channel. Let's get today's video going since we're prepared to dive into a pretty controversial personality's life. J. Paul Getty The oil magnate was born in 1892 in Minnesota to Methodist parents, was educated in Europe, and got involved in his father's oil business in 1914. The following year, he became a millionaire due to his investments in the family business. All that happened afterwards is history, as Getty, who later became a British citizen, built an empire with his entrepreneurial savvy. Even today, the name evokes richness, with just enough added scandal, and you'll see why soon. Getty liked to collect art pieces and antiques so much that they became a part of a museum after his death. Paul Getty was a highly educated man, being fluent in French, German, and Italian, loving to read and learn, and being a polytechnic high school graduate. He enrolled in the University of Southern California but never finished and ended up taking in Oxford classes later on. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. There's a lot to say about this personality and inspiring man, so without further ado, here we go! 15 Things You Didn't Know About J. Paul Getty Number 1. He Moved to England Where He Lived For 25 Years Getty was born and bred American, but in his later years developed an affinity for Britain, so much so that in the 50s, he was already a great admirer of its people and culture. He not only lived in Sutton Place as if he were royalty, but he also made it the center of his business, Getty Oil. Despite his eccentricity and penny-pinching habits, he used to entertain his friends who were British and Arabian. Among them were the Rothschild family and Middle Eastern leaders. For such a mysterious guy, he did live until 83, when he died of heart failure in June of 1976. Number 2. He had a passive-aggressive personality and was very stingy he might have been one of the richest guys in history, but boy was he eccentric. Apparently, he liked to appear poor and was incredibly stingy with his money. He asked his fifth wife to pay him back for acting lessons should she land a paying role, and he reportedly made his friends wait to get into a dog show in order to get some less expensive tickets. But the most shocking act of stinginess yet was his refusal to pay the ransom money for his own grandson. His grandson, Paul Jr., also jokes frequently about staging his own kidnapping as a means to get money out of his stingy granddad. Number 3. He was married five times and had a strong womanizer reputation J. Paul Getty had quite a bad boy reputation. He was a womanizer and quite the playboy, despite the disapproval of his Christian parents. So it's very probable that they didn't like him marrying five times either. What's more, he divorced each one of his wives. In the words of his attorney Robin Lund, Paul could hardly ever say no to a woman or yes to a man. His sexual prowess did get him into a lot of trouble over the years as well. At the age of 25, he found himself in the midst of a paternity suit filed by Elise Ekstrom, who claimed that he was the father of her newborn daughter. Although his lawyers tried to make her seem like a promiscuous woman, she did get $10,000 as a settlement, which in 1917 was quite a lot of money. He went on to father five sons from four of his marriages. Number 4. He was one of the richest Americans. There's much more to be said about J. Paul Getty's life and fortune. Although he has over the years faded slightly from our public memory, the American British industrialist was well known as the richest man in the history of the world. He received the title in 1957 when Fortune magazine identified him as the wealthiest American and was reportedly worth more than $1.2 billion in the year 1966. If he actually lived in 2017, that would have been an astonishing $9.05 billion. Not to mention that at the time of his death, he was worth $6 billion, or around $25 billion nowadays. No wonder that Ridley Scott's movie, which has him as the central character, is called All the Money in the World. Number 5. His net worth at peak was of billions. While the exact number is unclear, J. Paul Getty was frequently featured in numerous publications at the time as the richest living American or the world's richest private citizen by the Guinness Book of World Records. 
The founder of Getty Oil Company was first known as a billionaire in 1957 when Fortune magazine claimed that his net worth was between $700 million and $1 billion. Adding to the hype, Forbes estimated $1.6 billion since they also took into consideration his ownership of the Pierre Hotel in New York and other assets. So it's safe to say that at the time of his death, he could have been worth around $6 billion. Number 6. As mentioned earlier, his grandson was kidnapped, but he refused to pay the ransom. The Getty family is notorious for its wealth, but that didn't shield them from controversy or misfortune. Hence, one of the most scandalous kidnappings of the 20th century, that of J. Paul Getty's grandson, John Paul Getty III. When 16-year-old Paul was abducted by the Italian Mafia in 1973, his mother, who was at the time divorced from his father, had no means to pay the ransom to the dangerous group. Thus began a series of negotiations and heartbreaking deals. J. Paul Getty insisted on getting the teenager's ear in an envelope as proof the boy was indeed kidnapped and even negotiated the sum with his kidnappers, making sure it would be tax-deductible as well. He even refused to speak to his own grandson after he was released, proving that family relationships were very strained. Number 7. The Getty Family is not happy of how they are portrayed in movies and TV series The kidnapping drama didn't end in the 70s. On the contrary, many years after that, young Paul suffered from trauma related to the event and died seven years ago at the age of 54. The family is also not happy about how they are portrayed in the media and especially by TV series and movies. Paul's sister Adrienne Getty even threatened FX with a lawsuit over Danny Boyle's trust. In the TV series, which premiered this year in March, portrays Paul as the one who actually staged his own kidnapping together with the Italian mob in an attempt to get money for himself. The family is mostly concerned that this fictionalized account of their lives would mislead the public with lies and that the name Trust could not be further from the truth. Number 8. Most Members of the Family Suffer from Addiction most of the time, we tend to think that if we had just the right amount of money, we could solve most of our problems. However, the Gettys are a prime example of how money isn't a great replacement for strong family ties or, well, happiness. In fact, many family members suffer from drug addiction, so much so that people believe they are cursed. A prime example is John Getty, one of J. Paul's sons, who in the 60s was a big-time heroin addict, who was friends with the likes of Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones, and led a pretty wild life. His wife, Talitha, and his mother of his second son died of an overdose in 1971, which only deepened his drug problem. However, John did make a recovery and managed to break the so-called curse, living a productive life. He died in 2003 at the age of 70, having obtained a knighthood for his philanthropic work. Number 9. The 2018 TV series Trust is inspired by his life It seems that people can't get enough of the drama, and we can imagine why. Ridley Scott's All the Money in the World is not the only movie that picks up on the abduction story. The TV series Trust, which started on March 25, 2018, dedicates a 10-episode season to exploring the abduction story. Written by Simon Beaufoy and directed by Danny Boyle, it recounts Paul's kidnapping in Italy as his grandfather continues to refuse to pay the ransom. The drama series stars Donald Sutherland as J. Paul Getty and Harris Dickinson as John Paul Getty III. Probably the most chilling aspect is exploring the many reasons J. Paul invoked when refusing to save his grandson, including the fact he feared that all of his grandchildren would be at risk of abduction. Number 10. His Most Expensive House Is Worth $7 Million Now Imagine that you have all the money in the world. You would think that penny-pinching Getty was not above living on a smaller estate, but he actually loved big houses. His most expensive abode was the 700-acre Sutton Place, which was once owned by a duke. He actually chose this house as a kind of sanctuary since he lived there in seclusion for 25 years until his death. J. Paul paid a hefty sum in 1959 for Sutton Place, which would be equivalent to $7 million today. The house was also decorated with his lavish art collection and was later sold to art collector Stanley J. Seeger for almost $11 million. Number 11. One of his heirs, Balthasar Getty, is now an actor. No matter what they do, the family can't really stray away from fame. 
That's not exactly a good thing for Balthazar Getty, who is John Paul Getty III's son and J. Paul's great-grandson. The 42-year-old is now an actor, who has admitted he's had to make peace with his family's troubled past, riddled with scandals, broken marriages, and addictions. He now seems to lead a happy life together with his wife, Rosetta, and his two children. You may have spotted him in the new season of Twin Peaks, where he played the character Red. Nowadays, he's okay with what happened, and can even call himself proud of being part of the Getty clan. Number 12. He had a payphone installed in his mansion. As outrageous as it seems, all of this really happened. J. Paul Getty was not only a mysterious recluse, he was actually a bit paranoid about security. He actually had a security staff and trained dogs around Sutton Place. However, the coup de grace came in the form of a payphone, which he installed in his house for the use of guests. Before the invention of smartphones, people actually used payphones, which were normally placed in a box on streets for public access. He also had dial locks placed on normal telephones, thinking that it would be normal for people that were not a part of his estate to want to use a coin-operated phone box. Number 13. He piled up so many art pieces that a museum with his name was created. Even if you didn't know much about Getty before, the name is still recognizable today. Take, for example, the Getty Museum, which was named after him. Originally, the museum was located in one of his houses in Pacific Palisades, which he expanded especially for this purpose. He actually decided some years later, in 1970, to build an Italian villa as the museum's collection grew. Nowadays, the J. Paul Getty Trust's mission is to protect and offer access to global art, while it also seeks to educate people about visual arts of great historical relevance. So if you're ever in LA, you might want to check it out. Number 14. He knew that people liked him for his money. J. Paul Getty also liked to get real about being ultra-rich, and by getting real, he often confessed to others that he was very well aware of the fact he was liked because of his money. People's attitudes toward him were either that of admiration or expectation. In fact, his number one concern about his riches was that people were constantly asking him for money or expected him to pay for everything. For example, waiters wanted to be tipped generously, and he was always handed the bill when out for dinner with friends. This kind of presumptive attitude really bothered him, not to mention that he received around 3,000 letters from complete strangers who all wanted, well, his money. Number 15. His favorite thing to do was to change and rewrite his will. This is an age-old tale. The magnate who's in his 80s and keeps promising money to everyone, only to end up with a weird hobby of changing his will constantly. In his later years, Getty still worked a lot and had many mistresses living in Sutton Place. They were unaware that he kept rewriting his will and changing the sums they would each get after his death. $209 a month to one, and $1,167 to another. It was interior designer Penelope Kitson who got the best deal, although it seems that they did not have a sexual relationship. She inherited 5,000 Getty Oil shares, which was around $826,000, which ended up being way more valuable in the 80s. She also received more than $1,000 as a monthly stipend. So there you have it, Alexers, some of the coolest facts about one of the most fascinating billionaires in history. But before you go, please tell us in the comments, what would you do if you had all the money in the world? Still here with us, are you? That's because you're a true Alexer. And as always, we have a special bonus fact just for you. Number 16. He used to wear bad clothes and ripped suits. You wouldn't see today's billionaires walking around in worn out clothes and wrinkled suits, but that's exactly what J. Paul Getty used to be like. He was proud of his skills as an entrepreneur and penny pincher, and often faked poverty. Not to mention that J. Paul also washed his own socks as a means of saving money. Nonetheless, he liked to throw lavish parties with many people in attendance. It's also a known fact he was often accompanied by many younger women in these gatherings. Genius money saver or crazy billionaire? Who really knows what was going on in the mind of J. Paul Getty, the richest man in the world? Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.